Okay. Finally. Oh, we got five people in. What's up, everybody? Welcome, welcome to my final recap of Real Housewives of Potomac, honey. Thank you so much, Mel B. What's going on, baby? Oh, my God. LB wants to know where to sign the petition. It's two petitions, honey. Okay? And I'll be signing both myself. All right. Um, we're going to find that. We're going to talk about everything that is going on. Go ahead and hit the like button for me as you come into the room. What's going on, Matthew? Welcome, welcome, y'all. Um, I don't know why I have that glare there. <laughs> it's about to get dark soon. Honey, grab y'all's cocktails on this good Monday night. I have here some grapefruit juice. Top with some peach vodka. Yes, vodka. V-O-K-K-A. We got we got a lot to talk about tonight, honey. 17 people. What's going on, y'all? Just recently discovered your channel. I'm happy I did. Great content. Thank you so much, Zora Shelley. Welcome to Casa Bani. I'm so happy to have you with us. It's an honor. And you know, I'm I'm gonna continue to bring you all the content, okay? The conversations, the things. I'm so happy to have you with us. <clears throat> King TV says, hi, Miss Bonnie, watching again from Abijan. Oh my goodness. My overseas watchers and subscribers, shout out to y'all. I'm so happy to have you with us. Thank God we are 100% down with Robin. Let me, okay. Child, let, let me pull up my notes so we can just get into it. We got 23 people in the room already. Let's let's get into the shits, honey. I got some people on my list. I watched the clips. Now, I announced this in my community tab. I don't know if you all have saw this, but I announced that I was boycotting part three of the reunion because I just felt like I've seen enough. Enough is enough, right? When I saw that clip of Giselle blaming all of the dark women for the altercation that happened with Candace and Daphne and Kiana, I said, we're done here. We're done. It's curtains for me in this show. I saw the hashtag boycott, R-H-O-P hashtag. I said, let me get in on this, okay? I'm tired of the, the anti-black colorist crap. I'm tired of Andy and his shenanigans. I'm tired of the, the racism going on with production and Andy. Always siding with Giselle. Ne nobody ever has clips of Giselle doing anything, ever. But then what they'll do is contort clips and put it into the show to try to make it match what Giselle is going after Candace for. I said... Wait, there's some glare here. Let me get in front of that. I said, when that whole death threat conversation happened with Giselle trying to blame Candace, and then they pulled up screenshots of Candace liking tweets as if she was liking tweets of death threats when it was really she was liking tweets about colorism. I, I'm, I'm over it. I've had it. I don't have um, any notes outside of like, um, you know, pretty what, pretty much what I have bookmarked from Twitter because I was down in the hashtag, looking at the clips and everything like that. And we're just gonna go down the line and talk about it, honey. Why is my phone not charging? Unlock iPhone. Child, this laptop is so damn old. This laptop I've had since 2011. Okay, she's charging, honey. My my sweet little MacBook, honey, just just trudging along. Anyway, y'all, thank you so much for joining. It's 22 people in here. Go ahead one more time. Hit the like button for me. Also, shout out to Scotch Bonnets who have pushed my content up in the algorithm the last three weeks. I've gotten the same report that Scotch Bonnets have been watching my content for longer, therefore pushing me out into the algorithm, honey. Y'all have been shutting it down these past three weeks, okay? And I thank y'all so much. I cannot thank y'all enough. All right, I'm gonna read through some of these contents, uh, excuse me, 
comments really quick. And then I'm going to get into my list that I have. And then we're going to talk about it after I have thoroughly cussed everybody out that I want to cuss out. Then I'm going to drop a link into the chat and then y'all could come up here and, you know, air y'all's grievances, say what y'all need to say. And that's going to be tonight's review. That's going to be tonight's show. Because I was like, y'all are not putting me through all this stress and aggravation. And then I got to go sit and pre-record and then edit. That is like the most dreadful part for me. And I was like, I'm not spending another minute on this. Okay. Robin is going, thank you, God. Then I heard that she was down on Reasonably Shady Podcast, shedding a tear with Giselle. I said, Motherfucker. You know, I shouldn't be cussing before um, the 10 minute mark. So new here, but I love you, your content. Thank you, Kane TV. Welcome to Casa Bani. I appreciate you so much. Hey, chat. I love the glasses. Thank you, guys. The glasses are from zlul.com. I'm going to just post that in the chat really quick. Oh, shoot. I don't even have a banner up. What's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? Let me make this banner really quick. Um, IG. Sorry, I'm so bootleg, y'all, tonight. Honey Scotch. And then I'm going to put my cash app up here. If y'all want to bless the doll, it's definitely not required. The only thing I will ever ask of y'all is to please make sure you hit the like button. It's a free way to support the channel, you all. All right. All right, we're good to go. <clears throat> Hello. Okay. Here we are. Y'all know I'm still new to I'm still new to the stream yard situation. 36 people in the chat. Period. Hit the like button for me, y'all. All right. Um these comments are so funny coming in already. Y'all are a who and a holler, honey. Y'all are a who and a holler. Hello, thanks for the Real Housewives of New York City suggestion. It was very good. The last um, season, right? I really loved it. I really enjoyed it. I never watched any of the previous seasons with the white women and Ebony K. Williams, I think they had on there. But I love that one. Today is Manic Monday. Ciao, Mel. Let's get into it. Latina 2436, what's going on, baby? Adama, what's going on, boo? Welcome, welcome. Yes, boycott RHRP. Damn sure. Damn right. Yep, I've seen it. Boy, boycott RHOP. All right. I'm going to read a few more of these comments and then I'm going to get into my own review, cuss a few people out, and then we're going to do open panel discussion. They are firing everyone except Gizzard, and it's a damn shame. It's a motherfucking shame, truthfully. Candace said the network told her not to have so much vitriol during this reunion, which is why she was so laid back. But Candace was also in the early stages of her pregnancy. Yes. So I knew, well, I didn't catch it at first, but whenever said, whenever Giselle said that somebody had to talk to Candace, I was like, oh, she went to um, production like the white woman that she is. And that is why Candace was so subdued because otherwise we are so used to Candace letting them have it. Shout out to the 47 people in the chat, honey. Yes. And Andy looked absolutely ridiculous acting like he was so happy when they put that crown on his head. Did they put a crown on his head? Andy's such a damn flop. I can't stand his ass. When Candy started crying and said that she's on her own, I wanted to hug her so bad. I feel so bad for her. Me too. Me too. So production had a word with Candace about Wendy to bring it in. That's why Gizzard felt comfortable acting the way she did during the reunion. Exactly. Hey, are you dreaming right now? You're a great content creator. Thank you, Zachary McEwen. I appreciate you. Now, you are not too late, D. Nicole. You are right on time because I just started, okay? Hey, guys, sign the petition if you haven't. There's three for just... 
there are three position uh, petitions. She's an introvert. Hey, Bonnie Scotch, what's going on, baby? We now see why Candace was so restrained. She's with child. Now, I heard that Candace is, all right, let's talk about Candace first. Let's get Candace out the way. Candace, I heard she was 13 weeks. I heard she was 16 weeks. 13 weeks is like right around the time where you will first learn that you're pregnant. It's like very, 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 very early on. 13 weeks is super early to know, which I feel like, okay, let's say it, it she's 16 weeks, right? That means the reunion was filmed how many weeks ago? Like a month ago. Okay. She was 12 weeks then. Um, still too early to know. I personally am very happy for Candace. I am wishing her a happy, safe, joyful, easeful pregnancy. But I'm going to be real with y'all. I'm going to keep it a buck of room. I feel like because Candace is close to my age, like 36, 37 around there, it's already a high risk pre pregnancy. And it is very early for announcements. I don't know if she felt like she had to like, I'll show you, you know, girl, you already left the show. You already won. You get what I'm saying? So I just don't want Candace to feel like or I don't know. I just feel like when people announce pregnancy super early, I just get nervous. That's just a personal thing, but I'm so happy for her. Um, but the other thing is, is like, don't Chris got three kids by two baby mamas. So Candace is a third baby mama. Child. Shout out to the 54 people in the chat. Shout out to Candace, honey. All right. Let me get up into my notes so we can just, we can, we're going to get through this, y'all. I might be all over the place. Please forgive me. All right. Let me check the comments. Blame Zone said, you're. All right. Let me find the link for the petitions. So I can drop it in the chat. Um, let's see. Change.org page. This is a fucking key to me, bitch. It got. 1,200 signatures. I'm about to be 12 motherfucking 13. Motherfucking. All right, I'm posting the link. <laughs> yes, honey. Period. Freelance said, hey, Bonnie Boo, I'm on time tonight. Yes, ma'am, you are. What's up? All right. Let me get into these, ooh, 60 people in the chat. Yes, honey, all right. So <clears throat> here's what's happening today. I start my shift for work at 10 a.m., okay? It's 9.09 a.m. I go on Instagram and I see this announcement that Robin is fired, okay? Then I see clips of Kiarna told Ashley that she loves an apology in the aftermath, in the aftermath, I'm so glad that Kiarna clacked, clocked Ashley's tea for that because it's like, girl, you are really responsible for this whole melee. You get what I'm saying? I love that Wendy also clocked Ashley about the whole Osu conversation. Let me, let me, why does this feel so awkward? Hello? Okay. Ashley, <clears throat> who wanted to bring this conversation about Osu within Nigerian culture, here's the thing about Osu. My loose understanding of it, it means that you are an outcast, okay, within your community. You would think that Ashley would have more compassion in this situation due to the fact that when she went to try to meet her father, her own daddy, he wouldn't even open up the motherfucking door for her. 
So if we want to get into a conversation about outcasts, Ashley, you're the first one who knows about that. Your own daddy wouldn't open up the door for you. He paid your ass dust, but you wanted to usher in this conversation about Osu, about somebody being an outcast within their own culture and community. You have, you don't even have the range to discuss it. Ashley, weren't you and Sheila outcasts from your home when you were a little child? You and Sheila were outcasts under the bridge. Your mammy had some good for nothing nigga laying up on the couch, drinking up her juice drink, eating her children's snacks, and not contributing to the household. It was Sheila who got the eviction notice on her door. Sheila knows about being an outcast. So you would think somebody with Ashley's background would have more compassion for this conversation. There needs to be a lot more sensitivity when these conversations come up. 74 people in the chat, go ahead and hit the like button. I'm just getting started. Okay, we're getting into it tonight. Yes, I'm boycotting, boycotting RHOP. As long as Gargamel and Pennywise Darby are on this show, I will not be watching. I will not. I will not support this cast of anti-Blackness. I will not continue to line the pockets of these colorist ghouls. Okay, now let me continue to go down the line and read my notes. Hit the like button for me, y'all. Let me see what's going down in these comments, y'all. Debbie, what's going on, babe? You know what? Oh, you know what? Okay. Damn, I'm not logged in. You know what? Let me try to log into my Twitter. Because that would be a better way to pull up these clips because I really don't know if I'll be able to access them otherwise because I was going to send them to my Instagram. Tonight, we just doing a nice, we doing a roundhouse kick and we taking care of everybody. What? Oh, I don't think I'll be able to sign in. Yeah, my my very old laptop, I don't think it's gonna go for that. <laughs> um, Antoine says, sign, sign, sign. Jackie T said, just found your page this weekend and I must say you are completely on target. I will not be watching RHOP anymore. Yes, the glasses are awesome. My new glasses are from Zilu too, keep shining. Thank you so much, Jackie T. I really appreciate that. All right. Yes, what's going on, JJ? I don't know how to, is it JJ MS mom? That's what I'm just gonna say for now. Welcome, 86 people in the chat. I'm so happy to have y'all with me. This is the most people I've ever had in my chat, so shout out to y'all. All right, let's continue to getting into it. Eating all the Lunchables, exactly. Has some nigga laying up in her house. Your mammy, Ashley. All right, what else I got up in my notes here? I'm gonna go off the dome a little bit too. I remember seeing a clip of, now y'all know I love Karen, but I'm gonna have to get off in Karen's ass real quick for the one time. Karen do be on some bullshit. Now, Kiana was saying to Karen, oh, I thank you so much for being there for me because my mom wasn't there and that's what my mom would have done. And then Karen starts, you know, I think she starts tearing up a little bit and says, you know, I would have done the same for anybody here. We all would have taken care of each other. No, ma'am. No, ma'am, you wouldn't have, Karen. Because when Candace got beat up by Monique, you went to HR. Excuse me, on Candace. 
Ape sent me $5 for the computer fund. Thank you so much for the cash app, boo. I really appreciate you. <laughs> I really appreciate you. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, can't, um, Karen, you're full of shit. We're the best group to discuss this colorism conversation on Bravo Network. Okay, were you the best group to discuss it when you said to Wendy that you don't fit the aesthetic of the group? What did you mean by that, Karen? What did you mean by that? Also, I want to get into this clip that the, the clip that turned me off from part three and where I was like, okay, I'm out, I'm not watching. It was when Giselle was blaming all of the darker girls, essentially, never mentioned Ashley's name once. And I'm just like, the mental gymnastics that Giselle is willing to go through to pin this on Candace, pin this on Wendy. Wendy was trying to defend herself. Wendy ain't had nothing to do with it. Ashley definitely brought that girl there to fight. Um, What was I going to say? And Giselle, you weren't even motherfucking there. And then Andy, stupid ass, wanted to ask um, what was he asking her saying something about why she picked up the bottle and why she said what she said and what was said. And it's like, I don't care what Candace said. The girl pressed her with the, you know, being aggressive with the intent to fight. And now we have to parse and dissect what Candace said to her to provoke the situation. Then me, a stupid ass wanted to jump up and say, here's the motherfucking kicker for me. When, when Mia said to Candace, oh, you were wrong for calling her vermin when she got in her face. And Mia said, whoa, Deborah was being aggressive with me as well. And when she pressed me and asked me if I was still a four, I told her, no, you're a black queen. Deborah's a black queen and she just pressed you. But last year, when you were sitting at the table going back and forth with Wendy and you accused her of whatever you accused her, you know, of what did she say about her and Peter? Um, that she was snaking Peter out about the business deal and implying that she slept with her, I think. And then Wendy defended herself against Mia, said, no, I'm not you and your husband. Mia not only threw a drink, she threw her clutch. She threw her pocketbook. So somebody can defend themselves against you and you'll throw a drink at them and throw a pocketbook. But then somebody presses you presses you to your face and asks you what was said and you call them a black queen and tell them that they're a 10. Mia, you're a fucking joke. You're a joke. You're a clown. You sold out your family for a couple of dollars. And guess what? I hope it's worth it. I really do. When this show tanks, inevitably tanks and goes off the air, in a couple of seasons, in a couple of seasons, I hope that you can tap back into your stripper background. I really do. St start stretching now, bitch, because your days are numbered. Oh, let me get up in this chat, see what all y'all are saying. Linda says, hi, Bonnie, this is my first live love you girl love you too linda welcome thank you for making it to the live 93 people are in the chat right now go ahead and hit the like button for me y'all as soon as wendy came on the show a blogger said that wendy came from a cursed bloodline so ashley was aware then you had stupid ass giselle sitting up there talking about um oh is, is that heavy what the fuck do you think dummy and this is why i keep saying that Giselle is very dumb. Something is cognitively wrong with that lady because why would you ask? Ha have you not been watching the same show that, that we're watching? Are you good? 
stupid bitch. Gigi said that. Thank you so much for the super chat. Gigi says, it's clear Andy does not watch RHOP. He clearly only listens to his colorist producers. Mia is a reality TV whore. Correct. Correct. And if you're going to be a whore, be a good one. Anyway, let me keep on moving it down the line. I got so much shit in these notes here, y'all. I got so much in these notes, okay? What else do I have? Let me take a sip and wet the throat, honey. Shout out to the 107 people in the chat right now, honey. Period. Big part, not the little one, okay? Scotch bonnets, we live, we strong. Y'all yeah, really pulled up on your girl tonight. Shout out to y'all. All right. What else do I have here? Then I saw this conversation about Eneka and how she was allegedly introduced to the show and how she met um, Wendy once or twice or whatever. And then Andy's like, well, you know, Wendy, if you meet somebody once or twice, it means that you know them. No, the fuck it doesn't, dummy. If I meet a motherfucker in the streets once, twice, three times, you know how many times that would happen in, in Brooklyn, for instance, where I'm from? You go to some of the same events and you see the same motherfuckers. You say, hey, hello. Does that mean that I know them? What's going on up here? Marbles rolling around in their brains. Stupid. Just, just saying any stupid shit to justify anything that goes against Wendy's narrative. If Wendy met that girl once or twice, she don't got to introduce her to the show. She, I don't know why Aneka felt so entitled. Yes, I understand that this is how a lot of people come onto the show. You know, it's some really weird segue. Oh, this per person knows that person. Meanwhile, they met him once. They run, you know, through the same circles. And it's like, bitch, we run through the same circles. That don't mean I motherfucking know you. That don't mean I'm going to let you ride my motherfucking coattails to get on this show, bitch. Get your own shit. Why are you riding mine? And if your pussy was so fat, then why you ain't just go over to Married to Medicine? Like you said, they was checking for you. If it was so hard to get on this show, then you should have just went where you were welcomed. Dummy. Thank you for the super chat, Latina 2436. She says, Giselle neck rolls was distracting me the entire part three. I told y'all that her neck is starting to stack up and fold upwards into her chin and into her mouth because her mouth is so nasty, right? Child, let me. Let me see what all y'all saying in here, child. Mel said, Giselle is not dumb. She just like her dad. Remember when her dad was on season four and he had questions and made a comment to Karen about her and Ray tax issues. Giselle, daddy says something to Karen and Ray about their tax issues. I think you might be right, Giselle, and uh, Giselle, Mel, in saying that Giselle is not dumb. It's just that her light skin and her light eyes has gotten her over for so long. She's never had to be accountable, excuse me, for anything she said or done ever, ever in her life at her big hardback age. Then what really pissed me off is just seeing. Andy go at Candace at every turn, asking her all of these questions. And my thing is, is like, we have never seen Andy lay the hammer down 
on Giselle. This woman literally accused somebody's husband of S.A. just the year before. But we got to hold Candace's feet to the fire for how she chose to defend herself. This woman came to the show last year and lied about flirting with her husband. They played the, ta the, the tapes back. Nothing of the sort happened. But Candace has to exchange niceties and pleasantries to this woman who came up to her, pressed her in fighting clothes, trying to start some shit. Candace had to be the one to back down. Candace is responsible for her own assault. Wendy was out, somehow responsible. Giselle's talking about, oh, I'll take it back. No, bitch, apologize. See, I hate when people say, I take it back. You cannot take words back. There's no such thing. Words don't come out of the ether after you said it and go back into your mouth. Are we five years old? Amanda Kate, thank you for the super chat. She needs a neck lift. She absolutely needs a neck lift. She definitely does. Go and fix that shit. Neck all rolled up. Looking like a motherfucking honey bun laying on her neck. Just looking just as crazy as ever. You 50 years old. You should not be looking like that. It's all that damn evil. And all that evil eye is spreading. Speaking of evil eye, that's another reason why I feel like Candace should have waited to announce this, this baby. She's such a polarizing figure, right? That, I, I don't know. I just feel like, hold, hold on to your blessings until they come into fruition a little bit more, until things are a little bit more set in stone. But people are just so hateful towards Candace. I just, I, ugh, ugh. Child, let me get back into my notes. Shout out to the 110 people in the chat. Go ahead and hit the like button for me. It's a free way to support the channel. Now, if I hit, if I go into my chat and I don't see at least 50 likes, I'm gonna be feeling some type of way, Scotch Bonnets. Let me go up in here. Somebody let me know how many likes we have. Let me see if I can go to my page real quick. Let me see. 88 likes. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate y'all so much. Period. 89. Exactly. Wait, what are we saying here? Why are we talking about chunky, ne chunky necklaces? Let me go back up in the chat before I get back into my notes. Mel said, Andy has always been mean to Candace. Go back and look at season six reunion. It was way worse. Oh. What was so different from what Phaedra did to, to what Giselle did? Why did Giselle get to stay? Questions that need to be motherfucking answered. Questions that need to be answered, Lunar Love. I would like to know. Hello? Why wasn't Giselle fired? If, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> if Monique was fired, well, she said that she quit. I felt like she was let go. I always thought that, but I don't know. I just feel like depending on who the aggressor is in the situation is when everybody lets violence slide. When the aggressor is a darker woman, you know, Giselle had motherfucking security coming to the season five reunion. Meanwhile, we see Robin all puffing her chest up like the fucking She-Hulk. And security's never called for her. Robin likes to walk on, oh, she likes to walk up on people hard and fast and put her fingers in their face and all kinds of shit. Nobody ever called Robin ferocious. But I remember Ashley calling Wendy ferocious when Wendy just told the motherfucker that she had four degrees. But she's ferocious. But Robin wasn't ferocious when she got up in your face. 
and damn near mushed you in your head and told you to stop talking about her and her man? Hundred and three likes. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for the super chat. This cat rocks. Now Andy knows Candace is pregnant. I hope he feels bad, especially after they told him what she was not allowed to speak her mind this on this reunion. I don't think Andy feels bad. I don't think Andy gives a damn. I think Andy always sides with the the dummy losers the Porsches, the Giselles, the Robins. He, he has a penchant for dumb girls. He loves dummies. Mia throws drinks, but it's okay. Nonsense. Exactly. That's my whole thing. Yes, Candace confirmed to be pregnant. On her Instagram, she made like a little, a cute little announcement with her and Chris. She showed the ultrasound and everything. Um, so yeah, our girl is pregnant, honey. Um, and I was talking to my best friend, Tati, earlier about this. Shout out to Tati. But Tati was saying like, you know, that's another thing that she's going to have to contend with is that you about to have a biracial baby and they are going to look like Giselle and Robin. How's that for a mother wound? Okay. All right, let me get back into my notes, honey. Let's see what else I have here. Debbie Thompson said, Congrats on your growth, <clears throat> excuse me. The fact that Bravo thought this reunion was acceptable is just asinine. Your content is both funny and direct. Reject the hate and toxicity, just excellent work, Bonnie. Thank you so much, Debbie Thompson. I have been getting a lot of hate lately. Um, anytime I post anything in the neighborhood talk, they be on my ass, you know. Um, they were saying that I didn't like the fact that I was dark and Here's the thing about me. I want to say this really quick. I love my brown skin, y'all. This, my features are very black. Hold on. Get into the mug, honey. Oh, thank you, by the way, Debbie, for the super chat. My features are very black. I have brown skin. Okay. My hair is, I wouldn't say it's coarse, but it's definitely kinky. I have big lips. I have, you know, a very black girl nose. I love my features. I was raised to love my features. Do you understand me? My mom is darker than me. I love my mother's complexion, okay? I wish I was her complexion. My mom is like a Kelly Rowland, Kenya Moore type of complexion, gorgeous. She stays the same complexion of brown, the you know, year round pretty much. Excuse me, with me, I get, you know, um, lighter throughout the colder months and then darker in the summer and I, I cannot wait to get a tan. But what I was gonna say is that, you know, I grew up, my family is from Barbados and Trinidad, by the way, my family's Caribbean. I grew up as a little girl, going to visit Barbados every summer, pretty much from the time I was six months years old. From the time I was six months, I was in Barbados in the streets with my grandmother, with my great grandmother, rest in peace to my grand grand. But I remember whenever I would come back from Barbados and I would have this crazy tan, I mean, I would be dark, dark, dark. I remember how much everybody would tell me like how beautiful I was and how beautiful my tan was. In the house that I grew up in with my mother, we literally could not say the word nappy. 
Like for my mom back then to have a keen awareness of texturism. Meanwhile, I had never even heard of texturism until I was like a full grown adult, like probably deep in my maybe late 20s, early 30s. Maybe late 20s, yeah. We could not say nappy. My mom was like, don't even say kinky. The hair is coarse or is thick. She was very intentional about the language that was used in her house. It was never you're pretty for a dark skin or brown skin, whatever. My mom always tells me this, that she prayed for a brown skin baby. She said when she was pregnant with me, she prayed that I would come out evenly brown and not be like light here, light skin in the face with a dark neck and dark this and that. She was like, please let my baby come out brown. And I came out perfectly brown. I am proud of my black ass skin. You understand me? I love myself. That kind of self-love was instilled in me from very young. So to see people go the extreme length that they go in the comments to try to make me feel insecure about myself, like what if I was insecure? It's like, damn, this is what y'all do. They don't know that the inches are mine. They assume that it's weave. So they come for the doll. And they tell me that Giselle and Robin look better because they don't have to wear weave, all of these things. And it's like, girl, girl. <sighs> the assumption is that because I have brown skin, I hate my skin. It's like, bitch, I wish I was darker. In my mind, I'm legit like Lupita Nyong'o's complexion. I know that I'm not. I wish I was. But I think brown skin is the prettiest shit on earth. I really do. And people project their hate on me in the comments. And I'd be like, we, we, we are in a bad way. We, we got so much work to do as black people. We, we really do. Colonialism has done a number on us. Do you understand what I'm saying? It really has. <sighs> anyway, y'all, let me get back into, um, into my notes here. Yeah, so um, I have here a hashtag boycott RHOP, the black audience is over it. You cannot continue to insult the intelligence of the very audience that you cater to, the ones that support you, you can't do it. Um, what else do I have here? Um, I know. I know exactly what we'll get into next. Because, bitch, I'm going to share the screen on this one, okay? We are about to so get into it right now. Things are, the heat's about to turn up. So if you're sensitive to conversations about race and colorism and things like that. If you're a Robin Giselle fan, go ahead and click off now. Go ahead and click off right now. Not now, but right now. Because we got some other things to get into, all right? We got something else next on the docket that I would like to present and discuss, okay? Let me go ahead and send these to myself, honey. Now, why would it try to send this to me as a real? Be for real. Silly. Pull up the motherfucking screenshots on these motherfuckers. Shout out to the 125 people in the chat. If you haven't hit the like button already, go ahead and hit that for me. Let me pull up these motherfucking screenshots on y'all. Because oh, we're, we're getting into it tonight, honey. We're getting into it tonight. Yes, ma'am. Now, again, I say this. If you are sensitive to the topic of race or colorism, go ahead and click off now. Because it's time to blow some strands back. It's time to blow the fucking lace on your wig back. 
It's time to lift your wig up like Jada Kisses Tub. Let's do it. Thank you. Let me share the screen with y'all real quick. Because these girls think I'm playing. Here we go. Present. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. Let's go on ahead and pull her up. Let's have a little conversation, shall we? Let me close, close up on this. This is a screenshot from Robin Dixon. I don't know if you all remember this, but years ago, Robin Dixon took it upon herself to share her ancestry results on the internet. It's still up. If you Google right now, Robin Dixon ancestry, it will pull up her Instagram. Pull up. Let's discuss. Hello? Sasha C says, so happy I discovered your channel. Sasha C, welcome to Casa Bonnie. I am so happy to have you with us. Okay, we got another Scotch Bonnet in the building, y'all. Period. Bonnie gang, Scotch gang, we up. 140 people in the chat, we up. Period. It's up and it's stuck. I have it on my TV and leave it comments from my phone. LOL. All right, perfect. Now let's get into it. Right. Yvonne Parker said, Robin is a white woman. And that's exactly the point that I was coming in here to motherfucking make. Robin is a white woman. So let's talk about it. Let's get into it. You got 40%, 4-0% Africa in your ancestry, in your DNA. Nilo, welcome. You sure did. You, you're right on time, baby. A hundred years ago, Robin would be considered right. Right now, she's considered white. Cause let me, let me, let me get into it for y'all real quick. Let me pull up the other screenshot real quick. Let's let's talk about this. Child, I'm glad I ain't got none of scandalous on motherfucking Instagram. Instagram be telling y'all all your motherfucking business, child. Um, what was I about to pull up? This motherfucking sixty percent Europe, bitch. I know you motherfucking lying, bitch. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Robin Dixon, 60% European. Let me tell you something. That one drop rule bullshit, that one drop rule shit is gonna get us all killed. See, white people came up with the one drop rule because they wanted whiteness to be an exclusive club, right? So they decided that any of you whiteies mixing up with the N-words, right? If anybody got one drop of black, that means they all black. Well, guess what? She's 60% European. And what realm, in what reality does that make Robin a black woman? She is a white woman. She's not biracial like Katie Rost. And she had her big fucking nerve. Giselle, she and Giselle sat up there with their big fucking nerve, looking like the, the white women of the show, trying to police Katie Ross blackness. She wasn't, she wasn't performing blackness to their liking. But guess what? white woman you don't have a say in this right a white person and a black person don't make a black person it makes a biracial it makes you half black and half white a 60 percent european motherfucker don't make you black it makes you a white person okay now i'm the type of motherfucker that I feel like 
I don't adhere to white standards in my black American Caribbean household. Hello? So I feel that because you are 60% European, you got that most drops of white in you, you're a white woman. Now take that to the motherfucking bank and cash it. Robin Dixon, since you want to police somebody's motherfucking blackness, Hello? Let's be very serious. Okay? Let's be very fucking serious. Latina 2436 said, yes, speak what hasn't been said. Now, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I haven't seen this conversation. So, you know, if I'm being repetitive, let me know. But I was sitting up thinking about this a couple days ago. I said, wait a minute, didn't Robin tell us about her ancestry? I know I'm not tripping. At the time, I really didn't pay attention to it. To it. 60% European? But you wanna police somebody's blackness? Then you wanna sit up here and cry? I'm so uncomfortable talking about color. color. Yeah, bitch, because you're a fucking white woman. Yeah. Most white women are uncomfortable talking about race. Yeah. Very much so. Oh, I'm so uncomfortable. That's their favorite thing that they say. Ciao, ciao, ciao. What else I got on the jacket? What else do I have here, child? Uh, do, 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 do. do I got any more screenshots? Let me go on my Twitter real quick. Look at the bookmarks. Jog my memory. Y'all remember Giselle's 50th birthday photos? Let me pull this up. Let me send this to myself real quick. Oh my God, I think I let a bee in my house earlier and it's like buzzing around, there it is. Oh, fuck. That's a whole ass bee because I decided I wanted to like let fresh air in and it got in through the screen door somehow. Oh, Jesus. That's that's not okay. How am I going to get this B out? Let me share this picture that I saw today. Speaking of white women, since we're on the topic of white women. This is who wanted to police somebody else's blackness. Let's let's pull up let's pull up um the Giselle clip from the interview with Carlos King. Okay. A full exactly. Is that AI? Ciao. Woo ciao. No, this is her 50th um 50th birthday party. Not birthday party. <laughs> what am I saying birthday party? 50th um birthday photos. What else do I have? Oh. Um no, I, I'll save that for later. I'll save that for later. 
while we talking about white women, let's pull this up. This is a tweet from Socially Stacy J. So I was watching Rodney's live from last night. Shout out to Rodney the Voice, by the way. And he inspired me to find this clip from an interview with GEB, from an interview that GEB did with Carlos that I did not know existed. There is so much to unpack. Let's get into it, shall we? Shout out to, oh my God, in the jungle, the mighty jungle. That was so silly. I don't believe that's her 50s. Her waterlogged legs are missing, girl. Where are the cankles? That's my thing. Everybody wants to know what the hell is that. All right. <clears throat> now, let me pull up. That, that's a big ass bee too. It's not like the real fat carpenter bumblebees. You know, the real fat carpenter bumblebees that look like you could put a damn saddle on it and ride it. It's not one of those, but it's still pretty big. <laughs> no. All right. So, so I'm going to see. I'm leery about playing clips. Vanessa Williams from Timu, shout out. Season one was not good. People need to A, figure out where's Potomac. Where's Potomac? Who, who we are. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, let's, let's, let's keep it all the way real, Carlos. TV has not seen people like us. Has not seen light skinned green eyed bandits. Has not, didn't understand. Okay, they they educated in black women to college, but you know it was so foreign back then. And so I felt I felt like people just needed to, especially yeah. our culture, needed to understand. Yeah, we with y'all. Like we we down. We got the back. Bravo wanted to establish us. As they, didn't, they were confused as to what we were going to be. So it was like this big whole etiquette thing. Right? Unfortunately, yes. Let's unpack that. Now, the etiquette thing that they came in with for season one. I very, very recently learned watching the Brooke Ashley's channel. Shout out to Brooke Ashley, okay? She said that Potomac was not originally Real Housewives of Potomac. It was originally based on these mothers that were like in, you know, Jack and Jill or whatever. It was like these high society women, whatever, whatever. The Jack and Jill organization was not going for it. Excuse me. And so they canceled it and then try to make it this whole big thing about like etiquette. Okay. So that was really how Potomac was born. Now, my question for y'all is, what does Giselle mean by, um, what did she yeah. say? But, season two, why is season one? Season one was not good. People need to, A, figure out where's Potomac. Where's Potomac? That, that, that would, who, who we are. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, let's, let's, let's keep it all the way real, Carlos. TV has not seen people like us. Had not seen light skinned green eyed bandits. Had not, didn't understand. Okay, they, they educated the black women. They went to college, but you know it, it, that was so foreign back then. Light skinned, educated, green eyed women were foreign in twenty twelve. Were they, Giselle? Oh, y'all said it's hard to hear? Oh, no. I'm sorry, y'all. Hey, Shayna. Damn. So y'all couldn't hear it? Let me play it again.
we seen light skinned women, all the movies. Oh, it was clipping. Really? All right, let me play it once more. And so I thought, can y'all hear that? See the most not Oh, don't replay it. CKB striking channels. Oh, really? Okay. So there's a clip of Giselle saying that TV had never seen light skinned, green eyed women. She wanted to, they wanted to show TV that, yeah, we're black, we're educated, we're light skinned, and we're about it, about it. What does about it, about it mean? Oh, it's choppy. Damn, y'all. All right, let me see if I can read it to y'all. Okay, figure out where is the. I'm going to mute it. I'm going to read it. All right, not after season two. What happened to season one? Season one was not good, Giselle. Robin, y'all know it was not. And then Giselle says, season one, I think people need to know A, figure out where's Potomac, who we are, and let's keep it all the way real, Carlos. TV had not seen people like us, had not seen light-skinned, green-eyed bandits, didn't understand, okay? They're educated, they're black, they're black women. They went to college, like, you know, that was so foreign back then. And so I feel like people just needed to, especially our culture, needed to understand, yeah, we with y'all, like, we down, we bout it, bout it. Now, what else did she say here? We down, we bout it, bout it. Now I think Bravo wanted to establish us as this. They didn't, they were confused as what we were gonna be. Yeah. I I just, why, why does Giselle think that there wasn't enough light skin, green eyed representation on TV because there was plenty. Like what reality does she live in? Oh. I I just can't about it about it. <laughs> Jennifer Wade said about it about it. How nineties can you get exactly? She's so corny. Like shut up. Giselle has no sex appeal at all. She can't walk in heels. Just as stiff as her heart. Giselle's hair is a hideous mess. Lion's mane look better than her hair. Okay, listen. Giselle has zero sex appeal. Period. She's always doing some herky jerky dance. It just always looks fucking weird. Just ugh. anyway. Let me see what else I got going on in here, honey. Exactly. That's literally all we see on TV. So why do you feel like TV has not seen educated, light-skinned, green-eyed women? You just always sound so stupid. I just, I, I can't. I can't take her. What else do we have here? Ooh. Ooh. Speaking of Giselle, let me send this to myself. Real quick. Yeah, we we about to get into some shit, y'all. I already sent this to myself, apparently. Pre oh, I didn't. Forgive me, y'all. So, you all remember when Giselle was saying that, you know in regards to Chris and the lady who accused him of having an affair that she specifically said, oh, Giselle was not involved. Now, when I watched the reunion, I was like, why is Giselle saying that this girl said that she's not involved? That makes me think she's involved. It's like when little kids, you know, like I remember like babysitting grown up and kids are so obvious and silly. Like they'll spill juice and be like, I didn't spill the juice. And it's like, I know you spilled the juice, babe. It's fine. We're just gonna clean it up and it's really okay. <laughs> it's just like a stupid lie. She's like, she said Giselle wasn't in on it. And it's like that you were in on it. 
you paid that lady. I know Giselle put five on it. Ashley put five on it. I believe that y'all all teamed up and paid this motherfucking lady to say that she slept with Chris and had an abortion. I'm about to share a screenshot with y'all right now. Get into this shit. Get into this hot shit right here, y'all. This is Ayanna Williams, 22. This is the woman who alleged that affair with Chris, said she was having an abortion and then turned around and said she was lying. Somebody messaged her and said, hello, I have a question to ask you. Candace has been accusing Giselle of having something to do with the, your false allegations against Chris. Did she put you up to this at all? She did put me up to it. That's all I can say for now. Sorry. Because she's guilty as hell. Correct. T. Delgado. That's correct. Of all the things she mentioned, she made sure that was clear. Exactly. Give me Atlanta and married to medicine. I believe it too. Latin 2436. I absolutely believe that Giselle and Robin and Ashley paid that lady to say that she had an affair with Chris. I absolutely do. I don't doubt it for a motherfucking second. Say that just in case it gets erased offline. T. Delgado, this is going to be saved to my phone, to my computer, to my iPad, to the cloud. This is getting saved everywhere. Do you understand? Ooh, somebody said RHOP sponsors to boycott Genesis dealership, Cedarfill. Bush's Baked Beans, Fresh Step, Whole Foods, Stars, Olive Garden, Chipotle, L'Oreal, Sirius XM, Circle, Test Buyer, T-Mobile, OK, Floor Decor. Wow. Sorry, another potential with that text message. Just joined. So happy for Candace. Yeah, Elran. Uh, welcome to the stream. We are very happy for Candace. Shout out to Candace. I was saying earlier that I felt like it was too a little bit too early for a pregnancy announcement. I wish she would have waited till she was like a good 32 weeks in. You know what I mean? Like let let the baby cook. But you know, congrats to Candace. Very happy for her. But yeah, again, like I was saying, I do believe that Giselle a hundred percent had a hand in this. What else do I have here? <sighs> I have a reasonably shady clip from what else is going on podcast. Shout out to what else is going on pod. Um, basically where Robin is talking about the optics of the show in the beginning and how she was so happy that Monique came on because she was aware of the fact that there were too many light women and that they would not be received well because they knew that something about it looked off. I agree. I wish she would have announced at the end of the second trimester, just pop up with a bump up. Yes, exactly. That's how I feel. After the first trimester to tell, I feel like, yeah, get even the second, get, through most of the second trimester and then tell people. 13 weeks is when, when you tell your mama and your your best friend, not, not the whole world. Did you hear about Giselle's so-called friends off the show claims they worry about her mental health and they have backed away from her? No, I did not hear about that. Please elaborate. Where did we hear this? Um, yeah, I would like to know more about that. They're worried about her mental health. 
Um, in what regard? Is she having like a mental breakdown or something? Is it all the hate that she's receiving? Because apparently she she said, oh, we'll see when the tweets come up regarding Candace. Because um, she just knew that the audience was going to be on her side. And it's like, bitch, if she only knew that we would be dragging her and coming up with all kinds of petitions and shit to get her ass off the motherfucking show. I was about to say what friends. I don't know. that. I mean, I guess she has friends, child. All right, let me let me look into what else I got going on here in the bookmarks trial. And then I'll look through my notes once again. Is safe for Candace to leave because the big headed troll from Graffiti Bridge, Ashley, is so jealous that there's no telling what attack she would come up with next with Oscar the Grouch. I agree with that. And, you know, with this season, I really felt as though with the candidate, with the violence that Candace was subject to once again and them going these extreme lengths to justify it. Whenever that clip aired and Candace was saying, oh, I just know I'm going to be blamed for this. And Giselle was like her mouth, her mouth, her mouth. I, I started to like literally feel physically sick. I started to feel physically ill because I was like, it just makes me feel like, what are they going to do next? What lengths are they, what, what's going to be the next thing that they try to do to her in terms of violence? This was planned. This was orchestrated. Ashley was in on it. Ashley planned it. De um, what's her name? Delilah planned it. Robin had to have known about it because how was Robin conveniently gone? She was upstairs demiking. Giselle had already left. She complained. Look, she claimed that it was because of her dad. I just feel like what 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 would have happened at that point? Candace. I just, I got so scared for her seeing the way that they treated her. And, you know, I'm saying what everybody else has been saying. If that bystander had not taken footage of that fight so that we, the audience, could live with it for like a year essentially before the show aired, everybody would be, it would be Candace's word against everybody. Ooh, that B is. Oh, that B is huge. It would have been Candace's word against everybody. And that is what scares me about this kind of situation. They could have done anything to her. And they would have justified it and said she deserved it because of her mouth. Did Ashley deserve to get assaulted when she told Monique? that she miscarried and drove her car into a ditch because she was an old drunk bitch? Did Giselle deserve to get her ass beat for accusing Chris of SA? If we wanna talk about her mouth, her mouth. What about your mouth, Giselle? What about your mouth, Ashley? What about Karen's mouth? Karen has called Giselle every kind of whore, called Robin every kind of dumb and dizzy bitch. Rodney said this. He was at BravoCon, and Karen made um, Robin cry, said that she should get fired from the show, said that she didn't deserve to be there. And Robin was crying. She said she went in on her for five minutes, and Robin was crying. Like, I just... Awa says, I'm so late. You're good, boo. You can catch the replay. You know, I'll I'll be going live more often. Um, today I announced I announced today is live a little bit late because I just had a lot going on and had to get my mind right. Oh wait. Can't remember what platform since the leak of the third reunion, everything has been coming out. Robin being fired, Giselle the mean uh 
Mel says after the season six reunion, I really want Candace to leave because the way everybody was coming at her, including Andy, was crazy. Exactly. It's not safe for Candace to be on the show at all, Tracy Trey says. Oh, you know what I'm bad at doing? I'm bad at sharing my live when I'm live. So I'm going to share this to Twitter right now so that. People can join. All right, cool. Did you all see Ashley squirming when Kate called her out? Ashley was sitting there blanking when they talked about Cookie Monster. Ashley really trying to sit up here and act innocent and act like she had nothing. And she didn't know when... You know, when we watch back the clip of the fight, we can see Ashley, when the squabble is breaking out, we can see Ashley essentially going to try to stop Candace from picking up the bottle. Hello? Let me turn on my ring light really quick because I feel like it's kind of dark. Hold on one second, y'all. That's much better. Okay. Yeah, I did see Ashley squirming and it's like, Ashley had not spoken to Pete until part three. Why is she on this show? What does Ashley do besides be a scoundrel and a troublemaker? And this is something that Devon Parker said that, you know, it never left me since he said it. One of my subscribers, shout out to you if you're still in the chat right now. But he was saying like the reason that Giselle and Robin were so quick to forgive Ashley for all the heinous things she said versus Candace is because they see themselves reflected in Ashley. A, they have no job. B, they have no skills and they're, you know, light skin white adjacent women white women robin is a white woman as far as i'm concerned sorry she's a white woman if you're late to the chat i already discussed and broke down robin's ancestry she posted it on her instagram in 2019 how she's 60 percent european you're a motherfucking white woman the one drop rule don't count i don't count white people's racist standards for what makes them white you got six drops of white in you. You are white, ma'am. You're a white woman. You're not a black woman. 60% European does not a black woman make. Okay? So let's start with that line and start with that narrative. And that's my fucking problem with black people is we always want to assign blackness to any old motherfucker. We always want to claim everybody. We don't need to motherfucking claim everybody. It's okay for us to gatekeep a little bit. It really is. It's all right to gatekeep, y'all. T. Hart says, Ashley reminds me of a lifetime character. Her jealousy would befriend you just to set you up the first 48 hours exactly. She moves like them white women that would drive up and be like, hey, do you need a ride? And then you're kidnapped in the motherfucking back of the car. Underneath the motherfucking steps to the fucking basement, fucking run with Ashley. 
I don't trust her. I don't trust her. I don't trust anything that comes out of her mouth. I don't trust that nasty ass lying ass Giselle. Can I ask y'all a question? Did anybody cop anything from the GNA line? Yeah, I might have to fix me another drink. It's only 8.30, damn. We've been in here almost an hour and a half. It really doesn't feel like that. Thank you so much for the 149 people in the chat for joining me tonight. That is wild. That's record numbers for my channel, for my lives, okay? I cannot tell y'all how much I truly appreciate you all for hitting the like button. Okay, free way to support my channel. And thank you all got for the super chats as well. Uh, what else? The producers would have fixed to show Candy was at fault. Exactly. Not today, Nat said. Mega Mime brought Ashley, sorry. Mega Mime brought Deborah Allen Greer on to lie on Chris. When Candace refused to engage, Bert then decided to attack her. Not today, Neck is um is one of my many favorite commenters um on YouTube. Besides, like, you know, the Mel Pens and the Ayashas and everybody, like my regulars. Um, not today, Neck just always cracks me up. So shout out to you for always just bringing a smile to my face. Yeah. Um Deborah does look like David Allen Greer. And I'm not saying that on no transphobic shit or nothing like that. I don't even get down like that. She does have his features. I will say this about David Allen Greer, though. Back in the day, I never looked at him like he was shit. I never looked at him. But with age, with some soul and pepper, David Allen Greer is looking good, y'all. He looks cute. I was like, okay. Black man with the salt and pepper. Shout out to the late bloomers and the men who are just getting better with age. I feel like another man who's kind of like that is like Wiz Khalifa. Like I remember when Wiz Khalifa came out when he was 19 and I mean, yes, he's still like very scrawny and skinny, but I feel like with age, he, he just gets cuter. Mel says, remember at season six reunion, me, I have the nerve to say in front of Andy, the executive producer that Candace was due for an ass whipping and no one corrected Mia and Andy noted in his head, he nodded in his head in agreement. Andy is violent trash. Like we really got to start calling shit for what it is. Andy enables a lot of the violence toward Candace on this show. He does. And you know what else really fucking pissed me off? While we on the topic of stinking ass Andy Cohen with his old nasty self, okay? With his motherfucking sexual SH suits left and motherfucking right. That's probably the reason they canceled BravoCon this year, quite as is kept. But I heard they also wanted to do some like events like them. Um, have it in more than one place aside from Vegas, like New York and Houston, et cetera, et cetera. What was I about to say? Shit. Damn, y'all, what was I about to say? I was about to really get into some shit, too. Let me try to jog my memory. Remember at the season six? Me and the nerve to say in front of Andy. That Candace was due for an ass whipping and no one corrected. Andy, he nodded his head in agreement. Damn, I wish I remembered what I was going to say. Mel Penn, thank you so much for the super chat, boo. She says, Ashley has been setting up Candace in season four. 
season four. What happened in season four? Jog my memory with that one. Thank you for the super chat, Mel Penn. What happened in season four? Was that the season where Candace told Ashley to get out of her house and Ashley came back in and Candace threw the butter knife at her and everybody was like, oh, she threw one, bitch. If I tell you to get out of my motherfucking house and you step foot back in my shit, I could throw a hammer at your ass. And I don't expect anybody to say a motherfucking word to me. I don't expect anybody to say a peep. Because get the fuck out my house like I told you to. Because now what you're doing, right, is trespassing. Motherfucker. All right, Mel, put me on. Mel says, okay, so this is what happened. Ashley purposefully initiated an argument, an argument with Candace on Twitter, and I repeat, initiated. Not today, next day. People kill me talking about that butter knife. If Meg and I were going back into my southern house, I would have grabbed my, okay? Glock on cock, the block stay hot. You understand me? A Saturday night special. The fuck? Ashley being at the house that night was Chris' fault because he wanted her there and Candace didn't. I remember there was a time when Candace was, I mean, Chris was always telling Candace not to argue with them girls. And it's like, shut your ass up, nigga. And let her argue with these girls and defend herself and say what the fuck she needs to stay and stop trying to fucking silence her. (laughs) The optics. I love this comment. LOL, Ashley being kicked out of Candace's house probably gave her flashbacks to being put on the streets from eviction as a child. A, B. You came back to my house after I told you to leave. Baby, she would have been she would have been here to have she wouldn't have been here to have looking at those old ass babies sorry i i read that wrong she would have been here to those she wouldn't have been here to have those old ass looking babies exactly speaking of um white babies do you all remember when Ashley told Candace that she was the least accomplished person on the cast. Do y'all remember that? Can somebody quickly, quickly in the chat, drop down and name two of Ashley's accomplishments, please. And and don't don't name um Miss DC or whatever the fuck that um pageant title is. Don't name that. Name two Ashley accomplishments, please. Quickly. That's true, T. Degato. I also think Chris was always pressing Candace to be friends with Giselle. I remember that. I remember that. Also, y'all, Can y'all please tell me if I'm making this up? Please tell me this. But did Candace tell Giselle that Chris has like the biggest crush on her or some shit like that? Please tell me that my mind conjured up that detail. Like it's not real. Please tell me that it's my imagination running away with me. Like the temptations. Please, y'all. Like, (laughs) 
Mel Penn says, Ashley was in labor. Candace was not aware that Ashley was in labor. So Ashley deleted her tweets to make it seem like Candace was harassing her. Well, oh my God, I do remember that. When it was really Ashley who went on Twitter and started the shit with Candace and then Candace was firing off and then everybody was like, oh, Candace, you're so mean. But nobody was like, Ashley, why did you start going after that girl? See, the problem is everybody likes to go after Candace, but nobody likes when Candace responds. Everybody likes to have an opportunity to say whatever the fuck they want. But when Candace responds, she took it too far. Oh, it's her mouth. In Ultimate Girls Trip, Giselle said herself, Candace only ever responds to what's going on in the environment. That's literally what Giselle said out her own mouth on Ultimate Girls Trip, y'all. Ah. <sighs> Chris was trying to be their friend so bad. The best host. Meanwhile, they plotting on his ass, baby. Hello. The nigga was up in the fucking house cooking for them and shit. This nigga cooked for y'all, invited y'all into his home, said that y'all was his friends. Only for Giselle to turn around and accuse this man of SA. How do you like that? How do you like them apples? How do you motherfucking like that? Robin and Giselle, entire fan base are clear women. Ciao. I, apparently, there's like a lot of white women who go up for Giselle and Robin. A lot of colorist black people love them. So. Eddie and Wendy are the best. They turned that table around and made money. Happy Eddie. Apparently Eddie, oh my God, this B. No. That B has a big ass. God damn. Motherfucker is huge. Um, Happy Eddie. Apparently Eddie has merch. So shout out to Happy Eddie. I definitely want me like a Happy Eddie hoodie or like if he got like crew neck sweatshirts or something like that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I might have to get one of those. But I'm so happy that Eddie turned that shade tree into a money tree. A la Candy from Real Housewives of Atlanta, the iconic Candy Burris. Okay. Turn it around. Make it make it work for you. Make it make money for you. Ashley's friend eyebrows. Notice how he never gave Kenya or Candace first chair. I don't know why Kenya has never had first chair. I remember in Kenya's um, Carlos King interview, she was like, it's a respect thing. You know, Giselle has never had her first chair shifted, but they, they demoted me and they let me go. But when Robin took her shit to Patreon and she was hiding her storyline with Juan, they they let that go even though she sold it on Patreon for $5. But y'all fired Kenya Moore for not sharing her story. Robin does it. She comes back the next season. Oh, okay. Chris used to irk me trying to be moderator or peacemaker as if she wasn't always justified in her dragging of those bozos. Exactly, Elran. Like, listen, let, let, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me, let me explain something to y'all. If I'm with somebody in a romantic capacity, this is, this is a part of my expectation for them. When I explain to you the situation, I expect you to be more level-headed than I am, but I expect you to also turn the fuck up and ride for me when it's time to ride. My nigga got to ride for me. 
If I don't like the bitch, you don't fucking like her. And that was my problem with Chris is Candace was having all these problems with these girls. And he was like, oh, that's my friend. Da, 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 da. And I'm saying bitches turn around and accuse you of essay the next year, accuse you of trying to flirt with them. I actually told him, oh, he fell through my DMs. He was in my DMs. The nigga replied to your fucking story, you lying whore. Should I get a refill, y'all? Should I get a refill? That was uh, that was real gruff. Um, so at the season four reunion, everybody kept scolding Candace about what she said to Ashley on Twitter, not realizing that Ashley started the argument. She baited Candace exactly. Oh wait, this is my mother calling. Hey mom, I'm on live right now. Hello. Oh. Train was delayed. Oh, what time is she coming home? I don't know because it was delayed three hours. Oh. So, she might as well not come home till tomorrow. But I said, we'll see what happens. I'm going to say. Okay. Okay, so what? Say hello. Bye. My mom says hello, y'all. Well, you guys yeah, mom, we on here cutting up. We dragging the girls from Potomac. So, mom, really quick. Robin confirmed that she was fired. Um, yeah. Neck, my mom said good, y'all. Um, Candace announced that she's pregnant. There are two or three petitions to get Giselle fired from the show. And, and NECA is rumored to be fired as well just to catch you up real quick but we'll chat later okay. all right are you on your are you on your way home yeah where oh. it was oh it's it's big huh okay All right, mom. I'm I'm gonna catch you. Up. I'm gonna catch up with you later, though, mom. Um, you're on your way home, right? Yes. All right. Love you. I'll I'll um call you in a bit. All right. I will. All right. Bye. My bad, y'all. That was Mama Scotch, honey. Let me catch up to what y'all are saying, honey. Everybody said, "Hey, mom." <laughs> Hello, mom. Yes, honey. Bonnie's got your mom. Everybody say, hey, yeah, that's my mama, y'all. Shout out to my mom, child. Okay. Who I talked about earlier on this live, who don't play that shit. You know, who, who never played the radio when it came to her black daughters, always instilled in us how beautiful we were how beautiful our hair our features our noses our everything about us our skin everything honey we did not grow up in that self-hating type of environment oh y'all are cutting up in these fucking comments child oh my god in heaven y'all are funny No, the chat is moving fast. Oh, who is it, Bubba? That's my dog. Um, barking. Oh, he's about to bark at somebody. Bubba, who is it? Who's there, sweetie? Get him. Get him, sweetie. All right, let me scroll back up and see what all y'all was saying. <gasps> Shout out to the 140 people in the chat. Go ahead and hit the like button for me, y'all. <laughs> Sis, yo, y'all is in here walling low key. I love the Scotch Bonnet so much. Y'all are so funny. 
He actually got a degree of any kind, child. Having two white babies. That's what I was going to say earlier when I forgot my train of thought. This bitch really had two white babies and thought she ate that. You thought you ate that? You told us a few episodes ago that all you got is, is an Uber Eats card. Michael don't be giving her no money. That fucking prenup is so motherfucking sealed tight. These bitches get with these old ass niggas that got a lot of money, not knowing that how they got to the money is not spending their money on young hoes. You think you the first young bitch that ever rolled through his life, Ashley? No, you're the only stupid, you're the only one stupid enough to have his two white babies. You thought you secured the bag. You secured an Uber Eats card. You secured two white babies. Okay. Professional zombie feet rubber. You gonna get up here and brag about that? You wanna get up here and talk about how you holding some niggas cum in your mouth? The old ass white man at that. First of all, Rodney said that, you know, he thinks she's lying. Why would you why would you lie and say something like that? She's just not well. Uh, I'm about to get a refill. Will y'all hold tight for me for like 30 seconds while I go get this young refill? Hold on, y'all. Oh, wait, I got another super chat. Yes, did I? Hey. Thank you so much, Shai Diva, for the super chat. Ashley got a whole lace front wig and still started her hairline at the top of her neck. That's an accomplishment because how? Shai Diva, questions that need to be answered, honey. Who the fuck put that shit on Ashley's head? What is on your head? All right, y'all. Let me refill my drink real quick. BRB. Okay, honey. I wish I had like some elevated. <laughs> it's the bee right there. Okay, 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 okay. I'm not gonna freak out. Okay. <laughs> I got him in a mason jar, y'all. I'm about to get his ass outside. Okay, can y'all hear me? Okay, here's the bee right here. Oh, he's kind of cute. Okay, get on the paper, nigga. So I can take your ass outside. Okay, he's on there. Yay! Let me release him back into the wild. I'll be right back, y'all. All right, y'all. The bee is back outside. Let me go refill my drink. It's about to be loud for a second, y'all. So I gotta go down in my drink box. Put a little bit of grapefruit on there, honey. Y'all can hear me running around my room. I gotta put that. Bubba, who is it? Somebody's at the door. My dog is about to go crazy. I'll go crazy on you. I'll go crazy on you. I'll 
is outside my drink is refilled peace is restored honey all right new comments oh my god so many comments y'all save the bees yes honey i was the only one who freed insects from the house no kim cat i i free them um I, I used to kill a lot of stuff um, growing up, but now I'm to the point where I've, I've become a lot more gentle and I'm like, the bees are a part of our, um, like a very delicate ecosystem and they have their purpose and they do their thing. And what they do is outside, not in the house. So I've, I've learned to, you know, I, I collect the ladybugs. I collect everybody that comes in. As long as you're not like hopping around or doing anything crazy, I, I could work with you. Not you calling the bee nigga. Yes. <laughs> All right. Let me catch it real quick. I feel like I'm going to go through my notes one more time to see if I cover everything. I feel like I did. So Y'all are getting snacks while I get my drink together. Period. Kim Cat. Hey, Halle Berry has white kids. I like white men, not predators or the elderly, but white men treat me better and have more to offer generally. Ooh, 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 ooh. Are we having that conversation? Are we having that conversation? Because Rodney was just talking about this in his live the other day about the situation with Gerard Carmichael and, you know, this situation about this race play that he does and how we criticize a lot of drag queens for having white counterparts. And Rodney was saying that within our community, LGBT, you know, LGBTQ community, I'm, you know, hi, by the way, but he was saying for the gay boys in the black community, a lot of them have issues with their sexual identity. So they will you know, you'd be with a nigga and he'd be like, oh, tell people that you're my cousin. And it's like, whereas he doesn't have these issues when he dates white people. You get what I'm saying? A lot of people were criticizing RuPaul for having all these white people behind him in the production company. And T.S. Madison said this, RuPaul has all these white people backing him because you got to remember RuPaul came up in a time when niggas we're not accepting black people as gay or as drag queens or as whatever. It was really white people in his corner. So you got to get in where you fit in. And within our community, there is still a lot of internalized racism and self-hatred that people like to project onto other motherfuckers. So I will say this, date white, date Asian, date other, date outside your race. I don't have a problem with that. My only problem is when a lot of black men do this, they start to blash, bash black women and they have their outside dating preferences. Meanwhile, you don't see black women doing that. I'm not mad at you not today, Nat. Let me just make sure I didn't miss anything. Barb says, hey, boo thing, keep your foot on they next. Thank you so much for the super chat, Barb Meets World. Y'all, by the way, go ahead and follow Barb Meets World if you haven't already. We did our Black Housewives trivia night the other day, and a lot of you seem to really love it and have asked for a part two. So we're definitely going to work on a part two. I actually am thinking of getting that Housewives trivia book because it's just like, I think it's fun. I think it would be so much fun for like a cute, like girls game night sleepover type of situation. So part two featuring me and Barb Meets World is coming soon. We're definitely going to plan that within the next few uh, weeks. So definitely look for that. 
Rodney said before that white men are problematic because they fetishize black men and people. You, you get, you will see that. You will see that. You will see a lot of that. Um, the fetishization. So you got to be careful with. Does somebody want me for me, or do they want me for the BBC? BBC meaning the big black cock, or do they think it's a look for them to be, you know, with a black person? Do they exoticize you because they love to do that? exoticize black people. So there's a fine line. I'm just saying, get in where you fit in. For me, I love who loves me. You get what I'm saying? So, but I also, I don't want to say what I was just going to say. I was going to say there's more to interracial dating than white people. Now, in terms of interracial date, see, this is a conversation for another day. But we're not going to act like other races do not have like that anti-black element to them as well, because Asians definitely have it. Southeast Asians, them Indians, them motherfuckers be darker than me and my mother and be and want to be racist. I'd be like. How are you racist? You're darker than me, bitch. Girl. Anyway, child, let me scroll back up in these comments. See what, what else we got going on. The chat was moving fast for a second there, so I can't really get, um, keep up. Not you interrogating your mother's whereabout like she isn't grown. Let me tell you something. Let me explain something to y'all. Yes, I sure will. Sure did. Let me tell you something. If I call my mother's phone and she don't pick up and call me back within five minutes, I'm calling her father. I'm calling her best friend. I'm calling my sister. I'm calling every motherfucker in my phone that got my mother's number. I don't play with her. I want to know where you are. I want to know what you're doing. I want to know where you're with, who you're with, excuse me. I would like to know. Yes, um, I'm just one of those girls, like, I'm, like, very, like, with my mom. Like, I don't play about my mother, honey. I know she's grown, but, yes, yeah, she does answer to me. <laughs> Did you speak about Gordon's health and mission? And do you believe it or was it another scheme set up by Todd? Okay, Kelly, put me on. Um, what happened with Gordon and his health admission? What did he admit to? What did he say? I heard some, did, did I mishear this? Something about somebody having bipolar. What happened there? Those three stooges are literally obsessed with Chris because it makes sense. He in their mouth every season. Do y'all remember when Giselle took every opportunity she could to talk about Chris Bassett's penis? She was so curious about it. She was so curious because, you know, Candace, silly ass, came into my, oh, his dick is brown. It got a little bit of melanin in it. Melanin in it. So Giselle got very curious and she wanted to know what shade of brown is it? Is it peanut butter? Is it dark chocolate? Is it toffee? She she wanted to know the very, like she was so, it's like, why are you asking about that man's dick? That's somebody's husband. Now, if somebody did it to you, it would be a fucking problem. Speaking of niggas that Giselle brought around, remember when she had Sherman on the show? The only nigga that I really think that she was actually dating because she definitely wasn't dating Jason. But remember when she brought Sherman to the show and the twins were like, we like you better when Sherman's around. AKA, oh, they were like, you're nicer when Sherman's around. AKA, you're nicer when a piece of dick is in the picture. 
So everybody's like, oh, Giselle, the one thing about her, she's such a great mom. Is she? Is she? Gordon wanting people to feel sorry for him after he cheated on wife number two and rescued Mia from the pole is wild. So he was on his second wife when he met Mia? Damn. Gordon was moving through him, wasn't he? How you get them is how you lose them. Funny how Gizzard Beck was so concerned about G, was she? So what happened with G, y'all? Oh, he admitted to being bipolar. There's a huge stigma around people with bipolar. There's a huge stigma. Um, I know somebody with bipolar too, and it's like, you you learn how to manage it. You do. You know, um, the way people try to make it, like people with bipolar, they're crazy, oh, their personality is so this and that. It's like, I, you know what? I just feel like I, I don't like when people reveal those type of diagnoses because it gives people permission to weaponize and be like, oh, you're so bipolar. It's like the number one thing that people like to say when they don't like your personality or you display something different than what you're used to displaying in your personality. I really believe that Giselle's daughters go through a lot. I do as well. Why the fuck y'all think Grace couldn't wait to get the fuck away from her? Grace absolutely had a choice to stay in Maryland, to stay in Potomac. And, it's, you know, there are a lot of kids that stay close to home, that stay in the house because they just love their parents so much. I'm not saying that, you know, of course, maybe Grace really wanted to have the HBCU experience and all of that. But she could have went to college. She could have went to UM or somewhere. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I really believe that Grace wanted to get the fuck away from Giselle. Y'all are so hilarious in this chat with each other. Y'all cracking me up. One, one, one in the chat. That's a magic number. Ones are new beginnings. So shout out to new beginnings. And speaking of new beginnings, um, I was talking to my best friend and she was saying she felt like I'm so natural on YouTube and just makes me feel like, damn, what took me so long to get here? Like I'm so in my element with y'all on this platform. I feel the most myself on this platform and I wouldn't be at almost 2,600 subscribers if it wasn't for Scotch Bonnets. So thank y'all so much once again. Gerard made one joke and it became they do race play. Um, well, Teresa G, I feel like that's how it works. Like he made one joke, he led us into his life and it's like, I didn't really know what to make of that aside from like believing him. Like the thing about Gerard Carmichael, from my understanding is that he came out to his family and nobody accepted him. And this is pretty much a cry for attention. I think my best friend sent this to me, like he posted on his Instagram. I really just want attention right now. My family doesn't love me, whatever, whatever. I accepted my mom for who she is. She won't accept who I am. I think his mom might be by her. Don't get me to lie. I think his mom is bi. I've experienced this in my own family in my early 20s. I was around somebody older in my family, one of my elders. And I was just going out doing my thing, um, hanging out with this chick and spend the night, you know, being grown. And she kind of outed me. And she was really nasty to me. And then months later, she confessed to me that she was bisexual herself and running the streets with her best friend that I grew up calling auntie so-and-so. I said, oh, so you and auntie was running the streets and doing so-and-so, oh-ho, uh -huh. right? But wanted to persecute me. 
because I was free enough to be who I was. I wasn't even like being mad flagrant with it. I was just like, you know, I had a septum piercing and a mohawk. So those are like dead ringers at that time for lesbian activity. But it happens when you are brave enough to be yourself and somebody else in, you know, the family is not. And then they decide to persecute you and project all their shit. Everything that they never accepted about themselves onto you. It's some shit, y'all. It's some shit. Quiet as it's kept, that whole fallout with that family member is, is the reason that we really don't bang with each other like that till this day. The hypocrisy. The, the the violence I was subjected to for just being myself. And it's like, I ain't even fucking bother nobody, bitch. <laughs> I'm just being bisexual, minding my fucking business. And somebody's mad at me because I'm just living my motherfucking life, bitch. You had your motherfucking life to live. But you mad at me. I never want to be one of those elders, honey. I just... All my babies in my village, I just always want to be supportive. Oh, I don't want to get emotional. Sorry. Mm. I'm not going to get emotional, honey. Black women have started to bash black men now. I think all sorts of, I try not to be racist to my own kind while doing it. You can be anti-black to your own kind, but not racist. And I don't think that black women are bashing black men. I think that they are starting to wake up to the idea that black men are their oppressors. Okay. Um, black people are oppressed by white people. And a lot of the times you will take on the trait of your oppressor and project those traits onto the people under you. So for black men, the people that are under them are there are the women and the children in the community. And for women, black women, you'll see that abuse projected onto the children. Okay? So you have to identify your very unique privilege on this privileged food chain. Right? Now that black women are waking up to, well, I make more than these motherfuckers and I don't need a man to obtain a bank account or to vote or to be able to have certain freedoms or to do certain things. Women are waking up to the idea that I have a purpose outside of romance and having a baby. I have a full life. I have potential. I have goals. I have dreams outside of a man. I don't have to prioritize a nigga for my happiness. I think black women are starting to wake up and it, I think it looks like bashing because there's a certain amount of honesty that's involved in the conversation that black men are not willing to have right now. They're, they're not willing to accept about their own violence within our community. Why is it that homicide is the number one killer of black women? Homicide, intimate partner violence. Are we going to have the conversation or are we going to have the conversation? I love black men and I think they're very capable. I think they need to do more. I think they need to do better. So I'm going to just, I'm going to leave it at that. I didn't know you could sing, Bonnie. Like you can really blow. Now, Sophia, don't, don't gas it up, honey. Don't gas it. Thank you so much. That was that's really sweet. Um, I I started as a rapper when I was like eleven, and then in my early twenties, I started singing and recording. Well, I I was recording for a long time before I started singing, but I didn't start singing until I was in my early twenties. And then one day, I realized I was like, oh, I have a little voice. There's a little something something going on there. Thank you so much for seeing me, Sophia, darling. That actually made my night. Listen, let me tell you something. My mom is convinced that I should be on The Voice. She's like, you, you need to go on The Voice. And that means a lot coming from my mom because my mom is a very critical person. 
my mom, whose favorite singer in the world is Whitney Houston, telling me that I need to go on The Voice, which I won't, but. It's a good day in Potomac. Robin is gone, two more to go, exactly. Not today, next day. I don't want someone who will leave me or an Ashley or Mia when they get a good job. I want somebody who already has a good job and wants me today. <laughs> oh, y'all are shady. Oh, I like y'all. I really, really do. Yes, there is a lot of colorism in Southeastern Asia. Absolutely. Y'all need to see Case, the original or the origins of our discontent. Ooh, is that a movie? Asian Indians discriminate, discriminate against their own in Asia, period. Of course they do. Lighter people are prioritized. Hello. A certain texture of hair is prioritized. They don't want, even if they shit is like a curly wave, that shit is like nappy to them. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's a book. Okay. Black people are at the bottom of everybody's totem pole. Exactly. <laughs> the street lights been on. Where you at? Big A A R P H, and they think they grow exactly. Listen, my mother is my mother is twenty years older than me. Okay, she would hate me for saying that to y'all because let her tell it she's forty. My mother is twenty years older than me. Okay, my mother is fifty six year old. I don't give a fuck how old she is. I want to know where you are, ma'am. And if she hasn't called me back within five minutes, it's a wrap. It's done so. She's going to hear my mouth. Okay. Somebody said, Laura said, right. Like, no mom is grown enough to be out and about and not tell me exactly who she's playing with. I know that's my mother and she birthed me, but like, that's my mother. <laughs> like, don't play. He said he was bipolar. Okay. By Robin Dixon said, what is my name going to be? What is my name going to change to now that Robin is fired? I don't know, Fire Robin Dixon, but get on it, okay? This fucking profile feature that you have on this is so insane, too. He said there is no bipolar two or three, but there is bipolar one, okay. Oh, what is that? What is it here? Gordon and Mia could have tested the child two years ago. I mean, the child years ago, they brought it to the show because they need the Bravo check. Yeah, I agree with that, but it's such trash. Yes, out late at night driving on, she needs new glasses. Let me tell you, I'd be on my mother's ass like, where are your glasses, honey? Just like, how do we need them for distance? If someone with bipolar as well as my mom, his misinformation is dangerous. You take your medication, plain and simple, period. Exactly. Take y'all meds, y'all. Don't, don't be afraid to take your medication, okay? Do what works for you. That was Candace's fault. She shouldn't have said anything about his penis. You're right. Like, don't come on here talking about your niggas dick. What? what are we talking about? Lanou forever. I don't know why she felt so uncomfortable. She seems the type that if he tried her, she would do it. Wait, what what are what are we saying here? What conversation are we having here? Because I'm late. I'm very late. Catching up to some of these comments, y'all. My bad.
Bishop True said, she's a nasty woman. I wonder how her former church members feel about her. Scotty by nature actually covered this on his channel, uh, maybe like last week, last weekend or something like that, because there were a bunch of members of Giselle's uh, or Jamal Bryant's former con congregation that came forward and said what a nasty first lady Giselle was. So they were in the RHOP hashtag dragging her. Eight seasons, eight men, zero behind her, exactly. You have never had a man come up here and represent you or defend you or anything of the sort, but you wanna speak on everybody else now. Make it make sense. I just watched some of season two. Giselle was even worse, actually, extremely full of herself and pulling at straws. Giselle has always been diabolical. Teresa D said, I guess I get I guess I better get a second drink too. Yes, yeah, pull up, boo. It's 9 30. Then we've been we've been on here for two hours in 12 minutes all right i feel like damn what time should i hang this up because i don't feel like going right now like i feel like i'm still like we're still somewhat having fun she could have went to howard hampton or morgan state which are Notable HBCUs in the DMV, DMV area. Hello, Wisdom Enlightened B. She chose to go to, where's she going? FAMU, right? She chose to go to Florida. She chose to get away from her mother and go hours away from home. Hello? Choices. Grace wanted away from Giselle and Jamal too. Georgia has so many HBCUs she could have went to, but fam, you won out. Exactly. Not today, Nat says, my cousin came out to his parents and my aunt basically complained to everyone. So my cousin went back in. He won't admit it now. <sighs> That just makes me so sad. It really does. It really, really does, y'all. I've noticed in some of the Real Housewives shows that bisexuality can't exist. They think someone can't be gay, lesbian, straight, 100% one way. The bi erasure is tired as the bipolar insult. Thank you for saying that. I'm tired of the bi erasure. Some people really are bisexual in real life. Some people are really pansexual in real life. Shout out to my pansexual baddies out there. Pansexual meaning that you are attracted to trans people as well. Girl or guy. Um, for me, if you find, you find. I don't care if you, he, she, they, them, whatever. If you sexy, you sexy. The fuck? That's that's just me though. Um, so yeah. See, Christmas said I need a triangle. Yeah, I did. I, I need to probably prepare myself. I usually don't um, drink anything hard on live, but I said, you know, tonight, fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Like, why not? Portia is bisexual, even though she won't come right out and say it. Now, shout out to Rodney, the voice, who always points this out, that Portia in that bolo season was saying to um, the women, one of you bitches is going to eat my pussy tonight. Now, I remember distinctly Portia was down to the pulpit demonizing gay people. I remember. The North remembers. But seasons later, you're going to tell somebody that they're going to eat your pussy tonight. Oh. 
do you say this name? Idela. Adela. Adela. That's pretty. Adela Kando says, why not go in the voice? It's just not me. It's it's just not my thing. Fire Robin Dixon. I only watch Atlanta and Potomac. That's it. Well, Robin Dixon got her walking papers, honey. They told her to pack up that white box. The book case by Isabel Wilkerson. Let me take a screenshot of that real quick. They lose their life over protecting that black man. Which black man? They lose their life over which one? Are we generalizing in that one? Uh, I'm not gassing you up. I promise you, but keep it up. It's a muscle that needs to be flexed. I love your tone. I'm waiting for the live to finish. So go back and listen. Honest Sophia. Thank you. That's that's very sweet and very encouraging. And um Quiet as it's kept, I've I've been working on an EP for some years now. I just I'm so critical. Like music is the medium, the creative medium that I am most critical of myself in. Um, I crochet, I make jewelry, I'm a licensed cosmetologist, you know, I do hair and makeup and all of that stuff. I graduated in 2016. But with music. It's, it's just different. I, I kind of want things to be perfect in that realm. And I want things to be together because presenting yourself as a musical artist, there are so many different moving parts and I'm going to continue to work on it. Cause when you have a musical gift, it, it truly never leaves you. There are times when I'm listening to music and the lyrics are just like shh, 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 coming to me. And I have to really take that time and be like, okay, I'm going to write lyrics right now because apparently I'm a vessel in this very moment and I just, I can't do anything about it. So I'll, I'll swing back to it, Sophia. I do appreciate you affirming me in that. That's really what I'd be doing in the house all day. Just singing, riffing, whatever. Let's just uh, have a job outside Potomac. She needs to use that Hampton degree and get a job. Um, Stack stones. What's Giselle's degree? Drop down in the chat and let me know if y'all know what Giselle has a degree in. Because I know she says she's an educated black women, woman and she always says that. I don't, I personally don't care because I also dropped out of college. Um, I went to two different colleges in New York, one in Manhattan, one in Brooklyn. And then I was like, no, it wasn't for me. College is not for everybody, but I'm just curious, what are Giselle's skills outside of the show? And shout out to my best friend Tati again for mentioning this earlier, but she was saying that we are so keenly aware of Giselle. I mean, Wendy and Candace's accomplish, accomplishments on the show, the darker women, Kiana even came in with her business that is very successful. We don't, what does Giselle do? How did she pay for that $900,000 tear home, tear down? Um, if she lost Potomac tomorrow, what would Giselle have to fall back on? Wh what does she do? I don't know what she does. Um, that's just weird to me that we know all of the darker women's accomplishments, but between Robin, Giselle, and Ashley is crickets in terms of accomplishments. Two hours and 20 minutes is wild, y'all. Y'all really been rocking with me for the past couple of hours. I love y'all so much. Y'all kids be stalking us. My daughter has a life 360 on me. Yeah. See, Christmas, when you have children, I, I feel like nobody tells you, like, when you have kids, like, they gonna be on your ass, like, white on rice. The way I be on my mom's ass, I be on her, honey. Like she'd be scrambling to call me back because she already knows how I get. Wendy should have popped Nick, Mia, and Neka for talking about her mama. Let me tell you something. The way everybody mother would have been up for discussion fucking with me. 
I'm a petty bitch. I'm also vengeful and I also hold grudges. I'm not saying any of those things about me are good characteristics. What I'm saying when I say that is that I know myself, know thyself. You say anything about my mother, I'm not only taking it to the gutter, I'm taking it to the earth's core. I'm taking it to hell. I'm bringing it to the hell below hell. Hell's hell. I'm going to try to dig up anything I can try to find about your mother. Sure am. Yes, I sure am. Ashley or Giselle, who should go if you had to pick one? Why, why, why are you doing this to me via Robin Dixon? All right, let's, let's weigh this out. Giselle accused somebody's husband of essay. Lied on Wendy and her husband saying that she needed the surgery and that she was loose. Ashley brought that girl there to fight. She lied and said he was... They, see, they are both diabolical. They both accuse Chris of heinous things. They both incite violence against the darker women. They are neck and neck for me. I really believe that. Oh, this is a hard conversation to have. I don't know. Ashley or Giselle. I think I would choose Giselle. Giselle would have to go for me. I can't stomach her. I I can't I can barely look at her. Giselle would have to go. Giselle saying that Chris made her go to the room exactly. There's bipolar two, but no bipolar three. I think it's dimension. He's angry to remember. <laughs> I don't know why that was funny. Mega Mind should have stayed defending her family's bread from those three goats and left Deborah Allen Greer on Sesame Street. Hello. Beyonce said, ooh. You definitely don't find out you are pregnant at 13 weeks. That's that's the thing. That's three missed periods. Most women actively look to conceive will know at six weeks or so. I feel like. Oh, no. Okay, let me let me address this first. You definitely don't find out you are pregnant at sixteen. Uh, sorry, at thirteen weeks, that's three missed periods, is it? Most women actively look to conceive will know at six weeks or so. You, no, you're right. I think you're right about most women actively looking to conceive. That's that part. The most women actively looking to conceive will know at that time. You you are right about that. Lanou says, almost 3 a.m. here in Portugal. I really don't want to go. Say la vie. Catch up later. Lanou, I'm definitely going to go live earlier going forward um, so that my people in other time zones can, you know, catch me and we can kind of talk and shoot the shit. So I'm going to figure out what that looks like on the weekends. Maybe go live in the mornings, in the early afternoons, something like that. Oh, shoot. Oh, by the way, good night, um, Lenu Forever. Kim Cat says, let's keep hanging out till Rodney the Boy starts in about 30 minutes. You know what? I forgot Rodney is going live tonight. Damn, it's 940. This nigga loves to go live late. This nigga be going live at the time I be ready to go in my bed. Let me tell you what I was going to do. I was going to get off of here, um, try to find something to eat real quick. Heat me up something to eat. 
get in the shower and go in my bed, honey. I be in the bed early. I be I really be in bed at like 10, 10 30. Like I'm two 20 minutes off of bedtime right now. So um and let me read a few chats. Let me go through my notes one more time and then just make sure um I covered everything and then we're good to go. Speaking of crying, go is Candace not going to capitalize on that? I would so purchase. Then do a bundle with Sutton's face roller. Hello, Candace. Which should... that is one of those things that if she got on that, I would gladly participate. I'm a crier. I'm a crier. I cry multiple times a week. I'm a very sensitive person. I'm extremely empathetic. I have a very tender heart. There's no telling what will make me cry, truthfully. Money, I was responding to Fire Robin Dixon. Okay, got you, babe. <laughs> there, my new name is. Um, there, my new name is now since we successfully fired Robin. You like this profile pic too? I love it. Fire Ashley, forehead Darby. This is a great pro profile picture. I really love how it highlights the dimensions of the projector screen that is Ashley Darby's forehead. So shout out to you. Carlos King only pays his talent $2,500 per season and they're gonna pay their own way to travel and glam. Oh my God, what? Is that true? Karen Ayer says, I don't believe for one second that G is bipolar. It's a well-concocted storyline for Inc. Gia and Mia. Now, here's the thing. Now, we're at this point where 111 in the chat again. Go ahead and hit the like button for me, y'all. Now, we're at this point where we are questioning the, thing, questioning the things that Gordon says because we know that he is willing to tell lies behind Mia for a check. He's with the shits. So now we're having to question the things that Gordon says. We can't take him at face value. Jameer says that now that Robin is gone, she can ask Juan all the questions that she directed to Chris, to her husband. Why was there not one ounce of energy for Juan, the same energy that you have for Chris? I wish a bitch, a bitch like Robin would question my man about anything. I'd be like, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Don't, 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 don't. Don't ask my man no questions. Where's Juan? Hashtag where's Juan? Is it at the laundromat? Is it at the nail salon? He's with his girlfriend right now. So don't question my man about no screenshots and, oh, are you sure it's screenshots? Well, bitch, you don't know what my man's dick look like. So why are you questioning if it's, you know, screenshots or not? Don't be ridiculous. Robin really had some big fucking nerve at this reunion, y'all. Big, big, big nerve. Oh my God, there are some comments in here though. Oh. It's also a movie that came out a month ago starring Anjanu Ellis Taylor. Origin, it's really good. Let me tell y'all something about um, Auntie Ingenue Ellis Taylor. You put her in anything and I will watch it. I don't give a fuck what it is. That woman is talented. I just, I love to see her on my screen. Anything she does, I'm like this. Posted and perched. 
Okay. Love me some Anjanu Ellis Taylor. Um, oh, also she came out as bi. We got another bisexual doll in the building. Okay. Shout out to the bisexual girlies. Period, Auntie. Yeah, they got another little one. I'm gonna check that out. Origin. Let me screenshot that for because I be forgetting stuff, child. Thank y'all for the suggestions for the book and movie suggestions. I really appreciate y'all. I when I tell you I love coming down here and chatting with y'all, and I was kind of scared of the live format at first, but now I'm like, I need to do it more to kind of get into my swing, and I'm I'm feeling it. I'm here for it. All right, let me check my notes one more time. Like I said, I was going to do, make sure I don't have anything. I don't want y'all to miss Rodney's live. <gasps> the last time I checked my um, YouTube studio, I was at like, I just hit 2460. I just hit 2481, y'all. I don't know if y'all can see that. I'm almost, I'm 20 subs away from 2,500. That's wild. I don't know where them 20 subs came from in these past couple of hours, but shout out to y'all, okay? Period. Oh, I was going to look at notes. <clears throat> Bear with me, y'all. Let me just make sure I don't got nothing else. Oh, shit, I got a lot in here. All right, let me just make sure. I already dragged Robin for her European ancestry. Giselle speaking up on this fight. I don't can I don't care what Candace said to Dakota. How does it give her the right to get violent with her? Oh, I know it's because depending on the complexion of the aggressor, that determines on who we can persecute. What else do I have here? I was going to talk about the colorists in the comments of Neighborhood Talk. I already kind of touched on that. Fuck them, motherfuckers. Anti-black colorists, fucking roaches. Um, I, I think I covered everything. Yeah, I, I talked about in here how I was raised to love myself. Shout out to my mom. I, I think I did. I did everything in here, y'all. All right, let me just go through the comments one more time. I really appreciate y'all rocking with me for the night. I just, I can't believe that we have had over a hundred people in here consistently at the height of the live. That is so amazing. Hold on, let me scroll it. Cause y'all are, y'all are on one. She started her rights closing line with Ashley now, I guess. Just looked it up. Giselle did nothing but bake cookies for a friend at his restaurant, child. Giselle went to Hampton Institution before it became a university. Bravo paid for her home. Did she even graduate? Giselle and Ashley have no skill outside the show. That's why Giselle had to perform this reunion. Ashley isn't able to leave Michael. Hello. T. Hutch, you're me. I will call the police for a welfare check if my mom doesn't answer the phone. She gets upset, but girl, all you have to do is answer when I call. Hello? Pick up the phone and have the damn ringer on, too. I ain't playing with her. Who do you think they playing with? You gotta get these mamas in line. Just hell. Exactly, Kim Kat.
Oh my God, this one. It's 840 here. We must be by close and like Mia. Y'all are some shady ones. You know what? I have truly found my people. You know, I have been dragging Real Housewives of Potomac for months on months on end. And somehow, I got blessed with some of the smartest, wittiest, most clever, insightful, and hilarious subscribers. Like, that is the blessing here. And I don't want that to get lost in this conversation. Yes, I drag these bitches every week, but it the show in, in all of its messiness and nastiness and colorism and anti-blackness still brought me to so many amazing people. And that is truly a blessing. People who get it, who see the things that I see. Candace's mouth isn't vicious and dishonest like Giselle's. Thank you. Exactly. Candace's mouth is the least of my worries consider, considering what the women on her franchise and others have said. Exactly. Thank you. She said on ET interview, Candace told her mother in February on her birthday and her father's birthday that because the and shy where Rodney is Central Standard Time. So here in Chicago, it's 8.41 p.m. Okay. All right, so it's, it's still relatively early for a lot of y'all. People still gag over that read. Badra gave Kenya at the season six reunion, but expect me to hold Candace accountable for her mouth. The thing about that read that Phaedra had for Kenya about, you know, jerking off and the pizza man, I didn't even think it was that sickening. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I never did. I never thought she ate that. Like, okay. When you watch RuPaul's Drag Race and they have like, um, like comedy challenges, they will bring in a coach that is related to the comedy world somehow and they coach the girls. The criticism that I hear from most of the comedians towards the drag queens when they're telling these jokes, right? Get to the joke faster. Get to the punch. Get there. You don't want to lose the audience. Phaedra could not get to that fucking punch if her line, if her life depended on it. She took so long to get there. And it was like, when she got there, it was like, you said all that to say that? To make fun, fun of a woman for something that she can't control? Fertility issues? She thought she ate that. And people have been hyping her up for the past 10 years over it. it it's really crazy. LeMay says Candy's mouth trash. What about Ashley's mouth? What about Giselle's mouth? Their mouths are trash. What is a shame of his roommate, child? Is that his roommate or is he a squatter? Because he can't pay rent. That nigga ain't got no job. Give Candace a spinoff for the pregnancy and put Juan on the next season of The Bachelor. Hello? I already told y'all that Juan needs to get a spinoff. Flavor of Juan or Rock of Juan. And I want my motherfucking 10% cut from Bob Bravo. Because I know I was the first one to say that. And I remember Mims went live and then somebody took my joke and repeated it in the live. I'm going to leave it alone. Bro. Eighty-eight Roshan says, "Am I late to the dragon?" Yes, boo. I went off tonight. I'm sorry, baby. You'll you'll catch the next one though. The book and the movie are the same, Bonnie. Thank you, Sophia, darling. All right. 
It's a few minutes till Rodney's live. I'm going to let y'all get out of here. Thank you all so much for participating. Thank you for the comments, the likes, the super chats. Thank y'all for kicking it with me tonight. I really appreciate you all so much. This was a full experience. You can leave feeling accomplished as a YouTube liver. I'll never get over you calling that be a nigga. Let us be your first supporters when you drop your mixtape EP. Sophia. Thank you. Thank you all so much for participating once again. I keep seeing this number in the chat, 111. 111 has been this number that I've seen three times. Y'all know I'm a I'm a I'm one of the woo woo type of niggas. Okay. New beginnings. This is definitely a new beginning with y'all. And I'm just I'm I'm so elated to have such incredible, insightful, smart, hilarious, clever, beautiful subscribers. Okay. I'm wishing y'all an amazing rest of your Monday night. I am praying blessings over your life. I am praying that you have an amazing rest of your week. And um, what else? What else? I hope that you all get some good rest. I hope that you all do something nice for yourselves. I hope that you all do something that will bring you joy. We are living in very rough times right now. I think that we are all dealing with some type of collective grief. We live in war times. Shit is kind of crazy right now. And we can all stand to love on each other a little bit more. Um, so love on your people. Love on yourself. Um, this was so much fun and I was late. Yes, I, I had a good time with y'all. We, we was dragging and roasting and gagging. But I'm going to let y'all get out of here. I love y'all so much. Scotch bonnets. We are so strong right now. The brand is very fucking strong. Okay. I love y'all. Be safe out there. Okay. See you at Rodney's Live. Love you back. Yes, honey, Kim Cat. I'll see y'all in a bit. And y'all have an amazing rest of your night. Mwah, mwah, mwah. I love y'all so much. Okay. Good night, y'all. Latina 2436 said good night. Y'all be good. I love y'all. Peace.